You're listening to the Study Clicks podcast, your number one source for junior cycle and leaving cert tips. We make exams easier. Welcome back to the Cyclics Podcast with your hosts, Ema and Nessa. We are back and it's uh, it's the end of the year when this podcast is going live, which means that it's cold and it's dark. And uh, at it's some point, if you're watching the video version um, of this podcast, you'll notice that the, the light in myself and Nessa's backgrounds will gradually disappear um, because we're recording at around 3 p.m. So, you know, within an hour, it's probably going to be pretty dark. The but... fact that it's three o'clock and it's still like the light is fading is so depressing. I hate winter so much. I know. Well, it, I think it's worth mentioning that for anyone who is listening to this at the same time of year that we are putting it out, mm. it is a hard time to really study well because it doesn't matter if you're studying or working i find it is as soon as the sun goes down your brain just changes its rhythm and then decides okay well it's dark outside so it must be time to relax and stop being productive and just chill out because you know it's dark Mm, it Um, has a huge psychological effect on you because like while it's still bright you can still be alert but like when it's getting dark you're like all right it's bedtime and it's really hard to like yeah, it takes a lot of like to overcome that and to stay up and to like keep doing your homework or keep studying it takes like that extra bit of like motivation and willpower and you know it's it's not easy so just yeah I find that. especially especially when it's sort of that time of year when it's it's already getting dark as you're going home from school and so you really feel like you're having this sort of eclipse moment or, you know, okay, I've just finished a full day of work at school yeah. and now it's dark. There's no way I can possibly start into something new, but you do, you have to, um, if you've homework or study. And, and so that like, that is really hard when you've already done a full day of work and it's dark and now you have to start something new, even though it's pitch dark outside. It's really, I always find that really tough. So go easy on yourself if you're having trouble with that and, I don't know. Do you have any tips for that, Nessa? It's terrible because, like, one of I'd say, well, what's one of my favorite um, study tips, and I'd say would be nearly everyone who's listened to this to this least favorite, is to get up an hour earlier than you need to and <laughs> be productive. Great and it's tip. already like pitch black when you wake up at the normal time. And um, so maybe I wouldn't recommend that for winter because you know, unless it is something you want to do. Um, I only do it now because it's. Uh, uh, something or a habit that I have that uh, once you have a really good habit it's hard to break you should check out our habits podcast but um, I think it's like a couple of ones back we only did it a few months ago but yeah it, in terms of like tips it's you just have to kind of remind yourself that you once you do get home from school um, you do have a couple more hours left in the day and it's just and then you'll have the you'll have the evening you can get all that done and you'll have the, those few hours to relax at the end of it and um, but if you kind of give in to how dark it is after school and then just relax and then but knowing you still have more homework to do it's going to be so much harder to get get back into it and I mean now like obviously come home have a break you know maybe eat something watch a bit of tv but like don't leave don't do that all evening and then only remember your homework at 10 o'clock at night, you know, that kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, just get, just get done out of the way and just remind yourself, okay, it's been pitch black since four o'clock, but I, the day is still there and I can get stuff done. I can make the room cozy. I can put on like a YouTube video that is, makes me feel like I'm in Hogwarts studying, you know, those kind of things. And um, Gabrielle was talking about that on her latest YouTube video. Oh, we, we never thought about using the podcast to plug uh, Gabrielle's uh, YouTube channel. Well, to be fair, the channel's only been live since for one podcast. <laughs> for, <yeah. laughs> we launched this uh, a new YouTube channel. So Study Clicks already has a YouTube channel called Study Clicks, but we launched a separate one called Study Clicks Advice. And it's more like a vlog, really. So, like the Study Clicks YouTube channel, a lot of it's like math solutions or the essay breakdown videos that teachers do. This podcast is on it, for example. And um, but we wanted to do something that was kind of, I guess, like our TikTok page, except more long forms. And they're so so good. She's 
like it only launched back in September, but there's already a heap of videos on the channel and some really, really good ones. Like Gabriella, she's so smart. She did great in her leaving start, but she's also really cool and funny. And she's just like, um, just a, a great, a great old YouTube watch now, I would say. Um, so that one video that got me started, um, blogging the YouTube channel was whether or not you should play music when you're studying, a bit of a contentious one. Um, and she was saying that she listens to, um, soundtracks of her favorite games like Zelda and stuff and um, but that like those kind of ASMR channels on YouTube that make you think you're like studying in the Hogwarts library and it's Christmas time it's cute and um, put a spin on it you know make it seem cozy and fun and productive winter jazz cafe I love that those YouTube videos anyway we're digressing majorly from the theme of this podcast oh my god this podcast is a theme <laughs> I thought we Which were just is. chatting. Yes. So anyway, go listen to, or go watch the playlists um, and go check out Study Clicks Advice on YouTube. There mm -hmm. is some amazing advice on there from Gabrielle. She's extremely good at what she does. Um, but this podcast today is not about that. It's about, uh, Neth and I wanted to chat instead a little bit about our regrets from school and also what we were glad of in school like some things that we did right and some things we would have done differently um that's kind of what we talk about every day on the podcast anyway and we just sprinkle it in based mm -hmm. on the other theme so we just said why don't we do a full podcast because there's there's just so many things you don't think of when you're in the moment and doing them and then there's always you know anywhere and any time in life you're always going to have what if moments or, oh, I wish I'd done this differently. I wish someone had told me this when I was that age. And we're here to do that for you now, essentially, um, because we have been through it and we can give some advice on things that you should be doing now or things that um, we recommend you do in a certain way to try and not have the same regrets that we have. Or um, on the other side of that, if there are things you are doing now and we say that, okay, I was really glad I did it this way and you're not currently doing it that way, then you can think about changing your, your habits. So yeah, we're going to get into that and hopefully help you avoid some, some regrets of your own. Just get you thinking, you know, obviously you're going to have regrets no matter what. And I think that's a good thing to not, maybe not so much regrets, but to do things, to have things that you would have done differently or things you would have, uh, you think you did wrong because that's the only, and sometimes that's the only way you're going to learn. Um, but I think if you might listen to myself and Emer's regrets slash mistakes, that you might be a little inspired and it might get you thinking. And that's just basically the end of this podcast. Yeah. Um, and just to preface this, by the way, it's not like any of the things that we're about to say are extremely serious. And if you don't do any of them, then you're, you know, going to have massive regrets and live with it for the rest of your life. It's not like that at all. Like, I don't know, like just speaking for myself, Nessa, I don't have i'm not constantly burdened with the thoughts of the things i didn't didn't do in secondary yeah. school it's not like these things will hopefully these things won't last forever in your mind but it's just small things that i think could have enhanced my experience or could have made things easier on me or could have made things easier on other people and yeah that's that's what it is it's not an extremely serious you must do this and you must not do this kind of a podcast mm, yeah 100 percent um, and one more preface that I mentioned in the last podcast, as we get 15 minutes in and we haven't started talking yet, is that I've now started to time code all the podcasts when I'm uploading them so that if you want to know where, when a particular section of what we're talking about, when it starts and ends, you'll find that in the description of the podcast. Um, just the, something that I do just to make your life easier, you know? Very nice. Do you want to go first? Okay. Um, I suppose... Number one is maybe just like not being afraid of engaging in class because with teachers that I've spoken to now, just, and these, like, it's weird talking to teachers who are just people because they weren't your teachers and you're talking to them like, oh, work associate to work associate because we're all adults now, it's crazy. But, um, do you know, all the advice that they give is to their, their best when I ask them for their study tips and stuff. Um, it's just, it's, they say you get the best out of it when you're engaging in the classroom, when you're not being afraid to ask the teacher questions. And I think it's so hard to get around this one because I can't imagine myself in school, the person I was in school 
getting over that kind of fear of like caring to be seen as the one who's caring about how well they do, which is so silly. Um, yeah. but like it really would have, I just, if you want to do well in, in school and you want like, you want to be less stressed about schoolwork and you want things to make more sense to you, you can really utilize the time in the classroom. It can be so, so useful if you're, if you're there, if you're actively listening, if you're maybe taking down notes as the teacher's talking, like taking down notes as like what you want to remember, what you want to maybe ask a question about later, that kind of active participation. Probably if I did more of that, and I wasn't afraid to be seen as like, the weirdo who cares i probably would yeah. have sp spent a lot less time trying to catch up then in the weeks before big exams just trying to cram everything in because i possibly would have already understood it if i had like really made an effort in class do you feel the same uh, yeah that's one of definitely one of my biggest regrets as well just caring too much about how i was perceived or whether people thought i was a swatter mm. you know or <laughs> whatever and i was but it's yeah people already, and it's people already knew i was a swat i had nothing to lose <laughs> i know in hindsight yeah they knew anyway so yeah what harm but I, there's sort of two sides with i think people maybe the main reasons why people care about you know not speaking up in class or not asking enough questions or not wanting to appear too eager um one is is because they don't want to appear too eager but the other would be they don't want to ask questions because they're afraid that they'll look stupid because they might ask something that is actually really obvious to everyone else in the class or like maybe this will reveal that i'm